Hey everyone, welcome to another session into the Leap Into the Live Streaming Bootcamp. And I know that we've been covering so much, everything about like how to get started with your live stream show, your run of show, like the gear that you should use, like it's been absolutely amazing. Now this session, this session is actually a surprise one, right? So Anya and I actually just met, was it on Tuesday? We just met on Tuesday, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. we just met on Tuesday, and then I was like, oh my gosh, we need to have you on the show. Because here's the thing. Today we're talking about how influencers can actually work with brands, right? So think of this. You've already laid the out the entire foundation for your show. You're growing, you're building your audience, and what's the next step? The next step is for you to either get sponsors or to work for brands. So that's why, that's why I'm so excited to have Because if you guys don't know, Anya is the head of influencer relations at Restream.io. Yes, the Restream.io. And she's been in the business for so long, helping creators and influencers build those relationships. And so today, today we're going to ask her all about that. What can you do as a viewer to go ahead and start making yourself marketable to brands? So having said that, Anya, did you want to add anything else to your intro? Because I know, like I said, we just met, but you've got a steady stream of, of experience. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Steph. But yeah, it's absolutely such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me today and for the surprise arrangement. Um, it was a great intro that pretty much covers it all. Um, I do have uh, influencer relations at Restream as well as partnerships. Uh, we see those things kind of together um, here at Restream team. So Basically, my main job is to help um, streamers grow and at the same time monetize their audience. And uh, another part of my job is to help brands to get, uh, reach wider audience and uh, promote their products and kind of educate the world about great things that they do with the help of live content creators. So I, I love that you actually help content creators make themselves more marketable you give them tips like how like how deep into the rabbit hole do you actually help them <laughs> <laughs> well it starts with uh the nature of restream itself so restream uh, was born actually four and a half five years ago it was founded by two very passionate people from ukraine who saw the opportunity in live content and live videos way before it became uh, such a huge thing as it is right now and what we discovered as a team is that if you go live to multiple platforms at the same time, if you kind of reach uh, different audiences at the platform of their choice, you can grow faster and you can scale your presence, you can scale your influence um, in, in a much um, more efficient way. So this is probably the first and the most um, helpful tool that we have to offer is Restream itself. Um, on top of that, uh, we do have several programs and several different opportunities how we help streamers to to grow and monetize, and we'll definitely touch touch on them later today. Uh, but I would say the number one thing is uh, the tools that make it easy to go live and tools that make it easy to scale and amplify your reach uh, without doing too much work. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, Ecamm is actually, they, you have an integration with Restream. So if you did want to go live on multiple platforms, you can do that. I've used Restream before in the past to go live on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn, right? And what was so cool about Restream.io is that it gave me the analytics. It gave me the opportunity to actually see how long people were viewing, where the comments were coming from, and you don't get that from any other, like Ecamm alone, you don't get that, right? Like streamer, you don't get that. You don't get that from BeLive either. And so to have that integration already built in Restream is so awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah thank, thanks, so, uh, thanks for pointing that out. That's very true. That's another kind of helpful tool, the system of Restream tools uh, that not only allows you to create that content, but also kind of evaluate what you're doing. So with analytics, you can see which platforms could perform the best as well as um, kind of understand what you could be doing differently in order to improve the platform that might still need a little extra love um, and and maybe explore some platforms that you never heard about. Like that's, that's one thing that I hear a lot from uh, people who are starting to use Restream when they look at the list of platforms that they can connect. They're like, what's this thing? Like, I've never heard about that platform at all. Like, wh where does it go? What does it do? And then people kind of check it out. Do they research, explore and realize that, oh, this is actually a great niche thing for me or this is actually a really interesting region um, that this platform is very prominent in yeah. where I can increase my presence. So this is uh, definitely something 
that our analytics really help uh, with that you can kind of explore all those things and see exactly what you do and how how successful you are with uh, at those destinations and problems. Oh, I love it. And because like one of the questions that we're already getting in the Facebook group. So for those of you that aren't, aren't already in the Facebook group, we have a Facebook group for the Leap into Live Streaming Summit where you could post your questions. And one of the questions that we're getting is, you know, Stephanie, like, should I go live on Facebook or should I go live on YouTube? What's the best platform? And sometimes I will tell people, go where your audience is most active. However, if you wanted to grow like your YouTube audience, I think if you do go live on multiple platforms, just seeing the comments roll in on like, let's say Facebook where your audience is most active, it gives you that motivation to keep going, right? And it gives you that motivation yeah. that when the when the comments pop up, that the YouTube viewers who are just meeting you for the very first time, they're like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to understand the show, mm -hmm. the flow and it starts to make sense. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And now when LinkedIn is part of this ecosystem, uh, it kind of opens completely different horizons for us in terms of who um, who can live stream. Because for the long time, the answer to that question was like, oh, live streaming is for gamers. Oh, that's for people who play video games and stream their stuff. I heard it so many times, I know it's kind of crazy, but this is something that um, a lot of people who, let's say, not from the industry and who are not necessarily doing with live video, uh, their job is not related to live content. They say like, oh, what do you mean? Like, yeah, streaming, that's like Twitch, right? Yeah. And at the same time, when you think about, well, we integrated with LinkedIn. So this is not for gamers at all. This is actually for professionals. This is for marketers. This is for people who uh, are working with brands, with yeah. PR, yeah. With, with things like that. So it's for content is, creators. Uh, it's for content exactly. creators. And you could be creative in any specific niche, whether it's like, you know, woodwork or crochet or gaming, there's an opportunity for you. And so then that brings us to our first question, Anya, which is really what can live streamers do for brands? What can they offer brands as um, a partnership? Awesome question. So, uh, so there are, how I see that in my um, personal work and kind of my uh, experience working with influencers, there are two major value apps that, that streamers and content creators could add to brands when they partner in, in any capacity, in any shape or form. Number one is the audience. So basically that is access to their community, to people who follow them, to people who watch them. And basically those eyeballs uh, that are relevant to the brand, ideally if you chose the influencers right, that will be a very relevant community. Um, so exposure and reach to those people is number one value proposition of any influencer. And number two is the content itself. So as content creator, you are making compelling videos. You are creating um, basically <laughs> art, right? If you think about how, how much work, how much thought uh, most content creators put into making those videos, whether they're live or pre-recorded, it, um, it is something very crafty. It's very you. It's very unique. Um, and that is another valuable asset of any content creator, your unique style, your, the way you present information, the things that you put together. Um, and, and then when you look at those things as, as the joint, you kind know, of like a combination of, of um, things that you can offer as an influencer, on top of that, that's when you can start thinking, okay, so when is my audience aligned with the brand? Are they interested in this product? Is how, how can I get them interested and excited about something like this? And number two is like when I create my content, what can I do to make it more uh, brand friendly? Should I follow certain instructions? Should I follow certain guidelines? Um, and tools like Restream, for example, like our new uh, Restream Studio allow you to customize the content to the point when you have your logos, your backgrounds, your cool little colors. Um, and that makes the experience even more unique, even more customized, while still being very aligned with what the brand wants and what the brain represents uh, with, with the history of its existence. I love it. it. It's it's something that we talk a lot about in marketing. For those of you who don't know, like, yes, I'm a live streamer, but my background is also in marketing. I've been in the ad agency world for like the last decade and a half. And working with influencers, especially micro influencers, is super important because it's a great way for brands to test out a new segment of a specific audience and you have a content creator who has a loyal following and when they're honest about their reviews it's like it's like a really nice way to to build that relationship with that specific niche and I try to tell everyone like if you're live streaming start thinking about working with these brands and it, it's so amazing to have someone like you who's willing to pull back the curtain and say okay like this is exactly what we're looking for you don't need to have a million followers 
But if you could create content that engages people, that keeps them interested, then heck yeah, we want to work with you. Like, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I get that question. Question asked uh, quite a bit as well. If I'm a brand, like, so what, like, how do you find influencers? Like, how do we work together? It doesn't have to be the biggest guy on the internet that would be the best fit for me. Or like, how, how do I determine that? And of course, my, my personal answer to this is that yes, big influencers are great. If you have massive following, the exposure, uh, them mentioning your brain, them saying that giving you any kind of endorsement is extremely valuable. But in the end of the day, if you are selling makeup and that big guy is all about cars and car engines, I mean, <laughs> it might work, maybe, but it's not going to be ideal, right? Like so. Um, versus if you talk to certain people who are professional makeup artists or who are very knowledgeable about makeup and they can actually show you product from, from its best, right? And also tell things that they know to add on to the things that you can offer as a brand. That's when it becomes valuable collaboration and cooperation. And if that person only has, let's say, a couple of hundred followers, that those people are there, they show up because they care about what this person has to say, not because it's a celebrity or a big, big deal person, online um that that is for brands and for for your marketing goals uh for your relationship with your customer yeah. for your customer success this is much more valuable and so do brands care which platforms live streamers live stream on are they just like oh you know you don't live stream on twitch so you're not that serious or you're only on linkedin so you're not that big of a creator like do how focused are brands on that yeah, that's that's a great question. It all depends on the brand and it all depends on the platform. So those two things have to match. Um, so by, by the nature of how Restream kind of started, uh, a big portion of my work was working with uh, brands such as game publishers or game gear, so gaming companies, right? And when we talk to potentially helping them uh, with their reach and exposure through our network of influencers, uh, the f- thing that they say oh we want to make sure they go on twitch we want to make sure they go on youtube or mixer this is new platform that is kind of catering to gaming community as well so they care about those platforms because that is where the audience that they care about is so if you're a niche brand um of course it, it matters big time what kind of platform they go to uh, on the other hand if we're looking at people who are more business oriented people who are looking to reach marketers people who are looking to reach salespeople or b2b customers and leads then of course LinkedIn becomes extremely valuable because uh, how many business leads can you get from Twitch compared to LinkedIn? So the ratio kind of changes to completely different um, different part of it. So I would say uh, the answer to do brands care about platforms is yes, but um, does it matter which platform you should go to in order to get the most brands or the most interesting brands? It kind of depends on what brands you're after and what kind of content you create. Yeah, I love that. And <clears throat> I think even as a content creator, I mean, for those of you who don't have a media kit, it's nice to have a media kit, right? Because you could talk about your overarching audience, but if you are going live to multiple platforms, you could also say like why it's advantageous to work with you as a content creator. Cause you could say, well, because I also go live on Facebook, I could create custom audiences with people that engaged. I could tag you as a branded partner. So if you wanted to put like paid media behind it, you could do that too. And you know, think of that as opportunities because there are limitations. Like let's say on LinkedIn, you can't put any paid media behind it, but if you're using Restream to be on multiple platforms, well then now, you could add that as an extra like level of service. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so part of the benefit of going to multiple platforms, even if you see the opportunity, like, okay, so I'm working with kind of with this kind of brands and they're mostly interested in this platform, is that you as a content creator can introduce them to other platforms. If you are big on LinkedIn, it doesn't mean that nobody is going to watch you on Actually, it is very possible that you will have a lot of traction there as well. And a lot of people might not watch you on LinkedIn or not know that there is live content on LinkedIn because they're so used to YouTube or the other way around. So when you connect more destinations, when you spread your message out to more places, that definitely creates more opportunities and gives you the ability to tap into audiences that you might um, otherwise would never meet. You know, those people will never discover you because discoverability is a huge thing for live streamers, right? You can create great content, uh, but if you don't get those things right, it will always going to be around that 50, maybe 100 followers and like a couple of people showing up to your live stream. Um, so that is what companies and services like Restream help you with. It's, it, 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 
puts your content to more places and helps it to be discovered. And I, I love that you mentioned that because, you know, we've get I you know I tend to get a lot of questions from people like Stephanie. You know, I'm consistent, but my show isn't growing. And that I think that's where you have to start testing, like test different platforms, see where people are more likely to engage with you. Um, I, you know, I feel like sometimes, like even on YouTube for the stuff that I do, there's a lot of competition. You know, I see like my friends yeah. live streaming over there. I'm like, dang, like you are crushing it, <laughs> you know, but I could <laughs> easily, I could easily get myself in front of key decision makers on LinkedIn, right? Because okay. they're scrolling through, they see you, they see your setup and they're like, okay, wow, I definitely want to work with that person. So you guys definitely think about this because there's just so much you can do so much possibilities and all the knowledge bombs that that anya is sharing right now like i hope you're taking notes i tend to have like post-it notes like always on my desk and i'm like oh okay like anytime you don't see me on the screen i'm like anya oh okay that's awesome <laughs> that is so cute oh my god i love those little sticker notes oh my god everywhere i even have notes from like our call yesterday <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next question is, what are the monetization opportunities for live streamers? Because every platform has its own like reward system. Some of them you could have um, like the super chat feature on Facebook, you have like a different functionality, but do you, can you only rely on that? Are there other ways that you could monetize the content that you're creating? So traditionally people, uh, when people start streaming, um, the the logic behind most of content creators is like, okay, so there are two ways I can monetize. Number one is in-platform monetization. So basically if I stream on YouTube, I get certain percentage from the ads. Um, to each does similar thing for their partners and affiliates. And of course, most platforms offer some kind of um, sharing of the ad revenue with their content creators. Um, those earnings are obviously incremental. So usually we're talking about like cents or dollars per, um, per transaction. So those are very small. And unless you're really big, you probably won't be making much of those things. So, and the second thing people like to think about is, of course, the donations from their audience. It's a very common way to, to monetize. Um, if I love what you do, Stephanie, and let's say you are a YouTube creator and you have your little link saying like, hey, if you love my channel, if you love what I do, please support me. Um, it is natural for me to say, hey, yes, absolutely. I enjoy her advice, I enjoy her content. So here, here's a little donation. That is also... A, unpredictable, B, kind of like incremental, small, small amount of money. And you are kind of in that grind of constantly chasing those donations and constantly reminding people, hey, don't forget to donate. Hey, don't forget to support me, which not everyone is obviously comfortable with. So th then comes the third opportunity, right? The sponsorships and brands. So brands are much more inclined to uh, create long-term relationships as influencers. So if we love each other, if I as as a restream brand see that, okay, Stephanie is amazing. She's doing great content. She's doing exactly the things that I um, am saying, the things that I would love her to say about restream, not necessarily always praising us and saying like, oh gosh, this is the best service ever. But even if she's interacting with the audience and collecting good feedback loops for us, this is all very valuable. So it would be very natural for me as a brand to continue that relationship and make it more kind of like um, predictable source of income for an influencer. Uh, with just like long-term contracts. Um, so that is one thing that uh, streamers can think about uh, when, when they create content that, okay, so if I create relationships with brands and if I do a good job, this can kind of continue, be, be a continuous source of income. Um, on top of that, there are several platforms that allow you to, um, to monetize by just basically signing up um, and getting certain offers uh, to promote certain products. There are a lot of platforms of that kind. Um, Restream actually has kind of like an experimental product of that sort as well. So we do offer uh, sponsored campaigns for gamers um, uh, powered by game publishing customers, by That's select so cool. game publishers. So yeah, if you, let's say, if you specialize in certain game genre and uh, we have a game publisher who would like to amplify their reach and kind of, so to say, hire or contract some of our streamers to promote their game, yeah. Um, on their channels, uh, Restream has a tool for that. Um, even though it's kind of still a little bit under the ra radar, it's still <laughs> kind of evolving and pivoting it. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's definitely something for streamers to look into because that that makes it much more um, automated, so to say. You don't yeah. have to build those relationships directly with each brand, but you can use the the tool to kind of um, basically cater the offers for you, so you can just join, create content, get paid. 
That's awesome that you you just make it so much easier for people because they could basically look within that actual database, find out what their needs are, and um, find the content creator that they want. But also as a content creator, you could find which opportunities you want to participate in. And wow, I'm I'm just so intrigued because I haven't dived into it yet. And so just meeting you and learning about Restream and all the possibilities as a content creator makes me even think about things that I could do for my clients for them to start considering. And I think also the boot campers that are here, yeah. you know, who are working so hard on creating their content and building their audience, they know that there are platforms like that, tools like that to really help them. And so what are your thoughts about like media kits? Do you think that's something that content creators should also invest their time in? And and if so, I know you already nodded, so it's like, yes. <laughs> but, and if so, like, what are some important sections to have in there? Yeah, um, that's that's a great question. So yeah, so just to kind of like wrap it up with the previous thing, uh, since Restream currently is actively looking for you know, influencers to uh, create content for us and promote our brand, uh, I know after this uh, session, there will probably be a way to contact me. Yeah, we're definitely actively looking for people who are interested in talking about Restream to their audiences and communities. Uh, but when it comes to media kit, um, I would say when I look at influencers, if my... Uh, my first instinct is to just go to their channel and see what's going on there. So if you receive a wonderful, beautiful PDF with like all kinds of numbers and you know audiences and uh, streams and views, I do look at that. It's very helpful. But however, it, it has to be very aligned with what is actually going on on their channel. So um, definitely my, my number one advice would be to make sure that your social media channels and your platforms and your um, communities are kind of well set and, and good to go and ready for any brand to can have a look and be like, okay, yeah, this is, this is making sense. Um, in terms of media kits, um, what really helps is to understand what kind of content you specialize in. So like a small, very brief um, description of, hey, I'm a marketing uh, specialist, right? So my content is all about how to market things or my content is all about video games. Like I play first person shooters and this is what I do or I review tech. I review different uh, devices and gadgets. This is my thing, and this is why my audience is there. So that is extremely helpful. Some numbers are also great to know uh, how many people typically watch you. Um, yeah, how many people are live if you're live streaming? So what's your average concurrent viewer n- viewers number? Which platforms you're going to if you are happen to multi-stream, right? So if you are a uh, multi-channel content creator, it's always great to know like, oh, okay, so this person is going to like three different destinations. For me, that's a huge plus. Versus I'm exclusive on LinkedIn and don't go anywhere else. I don't care what happens, right? So uh, those would probably be like the most um, helpful things. Uh, Another thing is uh, I know that navigating influencer rates, if they are expecting like sponsor content, it's extremely difficult. And I know that nobody would ever put their rates in their media kit because of course it all depends. And every, um, every sponsor video is different. Every sponsor collaboration is different, but it's good to kind of, um, I believe a company, so to say, your pitch if you're reaching out to a brand or if you're responding to someone reaching out to you was kind of like a ballpark. Like, hey, this is typically what I do for a dedicated video. This is typically what I do for a mention or pre-roll because then I will know, okay, if you're earning, let's say, $50,000 to like drop our name, I'm probably not going to work with you. Like, and I'm, I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, but, you know, so, so we're kind of, but for some brand, that might be great price, right? And so it just kind of helps to immediately filter through things that are not going to be a good match and just immediately get to the point. And I, I love that when you're saying like, be very specific about what your content is about, right? Cause there are times where I've had people pitch me and they're like, Hey, we you know we have this really great podcast infographic that we would love to have on your site. I was like, I do not have a podcast. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, my viewers are here to talk, to talk about social media marketing and to learn about live streaming. And so it's, it's interesting when you have that. And I think if you could be very direct on your channel, um, very specific in your media kits, then it's going to be very helpful for you because there's nothing like, I mean, it's kind of like a nice problem to have, right? Maybe, maybe yeah. people are reaching out to you and you're like, maybe I should be talking about crocheting. <laughs> I didn't take that into consideration, okay. right? But I definitely think that's an opportunity and everything that you've been sharing so far is just, it's just gold because a lot of people don't think about that. They think, um, I'm going to go live, right? And then they don't think about repurposing their content into a blog post or getting found or they're only focused on getting followers. But I think even as a brand, if you want to work 
with um, an influencer or a content creator, you want to see the engagement. And this is something that you and I were talking about yesterday where we're like, how do you yeah. know if someone is fudging the numbers? I don't know if you want to talk about that right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's a great thing. So when, like like I mentioned, Restream runs quite a bit of those campaigns when we basically say, hey, you're, you're using Restream. We know you've been enjoying our tools and would you be interested in creating some content and kind of like talk about um, how how Restream is helpful for you and like what would be the terms um, and, or conditions under which you would be interested in doing that. And a lot of times, of course, most of the time you get, oh yeah, of course, sure, I, I would love to do that. I would love to collaborate. Um, and then you kind of offer them something, you give them instructions, which is also, by the way, to our previous question, it's a very important point for the brand itself. We talked about media kit of influencer, but for the brand, it's also very important to understand what exactly do you want from the influencer? What are the uh, to-do lists or instructions? Like, what do you want them to cover? Because if you just say like, oh, hey, go make videos about us. Uh, this is not very helpful for, for the streamer because like, what, what, what do I need to cover? Where do I start? This is, this is hard. So it has to be kind of like a two-way street media kit from one end and very specific instructions of what I'm envisioning as a perfect or close to perfect, no such thing as perfect in live streaming, right? I know. Um, <laughs> uh, close to perfect content uh, that I am willing to sponsor and support. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, coming back to viewers. So of course it's very important for any brand to see the exposure, to see like how many people are watching and how many people are with this uh, activation. But of course, um, if when I come to a YouTube channel and I see that someone has, let's say, 700 subscribers and they created content for me and it was live and somehow it happened to have 1000 live viewers, like I ask the only reasonable question, like where did that, those viewers come from? And then in that situation, I start digging deeper and I try to watch like, OK, so what is going on in the chat? What is going on in the likes and comments um, after that video was live? Is this? Uh, are those engaged viewers, are those real viewers? Um, if, if that, you know, if the ratio is very suspicious, then um, maybe it's not. And this is when it's important to remember for influencers or content creators that it is 100 times better to have 10 real life viewers who are engaged and communicating and chatting with you and then act like real human beings than to have 1,000. <laughs> obviously not necessarily alive you viewers definitely surge your numbers but not necessarily bring any value to um to the sponsor or brand yeah i think it's always helpful especially when you have viewers that leave very productive comments they're asking real questions that you could definitely go ahead and help them because if, if you know if i was a brand and i wanted to work with an influencer and the only comments i saw was like hi 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 right? Nothing yeah. specific about the product or the service. I would be like, okay, this is kind of sketch. And, but when you yeah. have someone, even someone that's just asking like, okay, but how did you do that? Right. Then that's, that's a yeah. learning. That's a teaching opportunity for you as the content creator. And also as the brand to swoop in and be like, oh, Hey, you know, we have a PDF or an ebook about that to really help you learn a little bit more about it. So good stuff. Yeah, and uh, with comments, with, especially when, when you see the influencer who really ignites their community and who actually gets them to participate by using, sometimes you're using sort of helpful tools and tips to use call for actions. You kind of see like, hey guys, come on, like tell me what you think, like me here, say this, comment on this link, check out this product and like tell me what you think. This is very helpful when the influencer is kind of igniting their community and trying to encourage them to be proactive. And honestly, for me, when I see comments from uh, the viewers, even if they're not necessarily super positive slash praising, when people say like, oh, you know what? I tried Restream. This thing didn't work. Like I actually look at it and I think about it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like yesterday, that thing actually did not work. But I understand the authenticity and I, I appreciate the honesty. And I definitely enjoy the, the fact that those people are real and those people are extremely engaged. So because we're having a real conversation here. Oh yeah. I mean, I remember like, I think it was just like earlier this week, like Virgin Media, even there's like this big, huge internet outage, right? And yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, you just, live streaming is improv and you do the best that you can, which is why I appreciate having the live Q and A in the Facebook group to ask people that. So one last question for you, as far as content creators, how can they boost and grow their influencer program? If you are a brand, right, or, <laughs> sorry, is it? Oops. Yeah, if you're a brand, how can you boost your influencer program to get those content creators? 
Yeah, got you, got you. So yes, yeah, so if you are, um, if you're just kind of starting to think about it, um, it is it is difficult. It's a difficult world to navigate, right? There's so much information out there. There's so many different things you can do. You can pay a lot of money for not getting much results, right? You can hire, you know, best popular people, but they not, won't necessarily have the traction that you expect. Um, it's it's very easy to get lost. So like my my uh, advice to, as a person who is basically starting and building the Restream Influencer Program from scratch, um, of course, with the help of our team, but um, it was kind of one of those things that I was at at the beginning of uh, the first question I asked myself is who are the people that I want to see in that in that program? Who are my best ambassadors? Who are the best advocates for what Restream is doing? Um, and once I kind of created that profile for myself, like okay, so those will be people with this kind of following, with this type of content. And I also thought about the verticals, like what kind of different markets or fields of or types of content I would be interested in. Do I only want to work with gamers um, and tell them that Restream is a wonderful tool to stream your game? Or do I want to also work with marketers and business professionals and kind of tell them, hey, you know, whatever you have going on on your LinkedIn, your vast network, your connections, that is very valuable for me as a brand. You can share our tools and our um, resources with them so, so they can potentially become our clients and users. So once you kind of figure out like, okay, so those are my core values and core things that I want to see in Facebook and those are my verticals that I definitely want to tap in, um, that is a good starting point to, to then reach out. And then your next, I guess your one and a half step <laughs> becomes testing. Then it's all about trial and error. Give five, 10 people the opportunity to create a video for you. Give those you know, five, 10 people something, maybe give your product in exchange for, for mention or for the video, uh, maybe negotiate some terms that are favorable for everybody because it's very important that both parties are happy. If I tell you like, hey, create a bunch of videos for Restream and I'm gonna maybe send you a t-shirt, you know, that, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> actually, which I'm actually totally going to do, Stephanie. <laughs> After we finish this conversation, I'm gonna definitely send you some of our swag. But uh, you, you gotta you gotta think about it. Like, yeah, what's valuable for them? Like, should you offer them um, some kind of compensation, or will your product uh, in exchange for endorsement would be a mutual benefit agreement? Um, so those are the things that you kind of first first think about. But it you will never know until you run your your first experiment, until yeah. you work with those couple of people and see what they did. Uh, what actually came out of it, and and then you just keep building on that. Learn, yeah. learn what was good. And yeah, learn what works and what didn't and work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I think that's also a, a lesson just for brands because some brands the they first think about working with content creators and they don't really quite know what they're getting themselves into because they may, maybe they've never done it before, and so I think as a content creator, the more prepared you are, right? Like having the media kit. And, giving examples, even case studies is always going to be helpful for your case in winning those brands as well as the sponsorships. So Anya, this has been amazing. I'm so like excited about the future of our relationship because it's the, the, the things that you have taught me, right? Because even as the host, you guys, I'm still learning things too, right? Even as the host, like I'm learning things from you and it's expanding my horizons because yeah, I've I've always thought of, thought of myself as the business side. So Facebook for the advertising piece of it, for LinkedIn. Um, I haven't even considered anything about Mixergy or even Twitch, but it's something that I can test. And um, I think you've provided a lot of inspiration for everyone as far as where their show can go. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. Yeah. And so if people want to keep in touch with you, obviously they could tag you in the Facebook group. They could ask questions. But is there another preferred way that you'd like people to reach out? Uh, they can definitely find me on LinkedIn by just this person last name uh, right there. <laughs> and they can also email me at anya.brazina at restream.io. So it's first dot last name at um, restream the title that you can see on my t-shirt yeah and I want one of those shirts <laughs> oh it's coming it's coming for you <laughs> alright everyone thank you so much for tuning in I hope you learned so much about how you as the content creator can work with brands everything that you've learned today you still have access for 30 days so I know she was dropping a ton of knowledge bombs again there's not so much I could take a take on little post-it notes 
<laughs> so I definitely want to go back and learn a little bit more. And again, if you have any questions about Restream.io, the tool, the influencers, if you want to connect with Anya, then go ahead and find her at Restream.io and in the Facebook group. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.